Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another Route 24 video. It's the end of August, so of course that means we're going to go ahead and take a look at what's going to come out in the Japanese release schedule for September. Now since these are the Japanese release dates, the English release dates will probably be a little different. They could be before or after or something like that. But that doesn't matter, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what I think might be worth your time within the next four weeks. Getting things started on September 3rd is Final Fantasy VIII Remastered for the PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and the PC. Uh, so pretty much everything. Square Enix has been putting out a lot of their classic stuff on pretty much every console. I mean, if it plays games, they'll probably try to put a game on there, including mobile phones. FF8, though, has been a really weird omission in their re-release kind of schedule. But that changes. Finally, on the 3rd, we can enjoy the... Uh, maybe the black sheep of the uh, PlayStation Final Fantasy games in glorious HD. So finally, finally, Squall will actually be the best looking guy at that party. Coming up next on September 19th, you can check out AI Somnium Files for the PS4, Switch, and PC. Now I feel like this game isn't getting a lot of attention, but I'm particularly interested in it just because it's going to be directed and written by Kotaro Uchikoshi. Who, if you don't know, directed the Zero Escape games. And those games are really, really, really good. I think if you played them, generally, like most people who have played them, like actually really like them. They're the kind of like the perfect mix between science fiction and actual science, like just enough to be believable. So if you're really into those games, I would definitely go ahead and give this a look. Hopefully it's going to be more of that magic mix. If that's on your thing though, I would go ahead and check out The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch on September 20th. This game came out twice in the past, once in black and white on Game Boy and then again on the Game Boy Color with Link's Awakening DX. This is like a full remake, but it keeps that top-down gameplay feel. I think for me the highlight is definitely the art style. It looks really unique. I really like this miniature kind of diorama look. The lighting looks really, really great. It's, it has really it has that good like plastic kind of feel like these are characters that you can kind of almost reach out and touch. If you've never played Link's Awakening before, I would definitely go ahead and give this a look. It's one of my favorite Zelda games and hopefully you'll really enjoy it whether you're playing it for the first time or revisiting it after a lot of years. If Zelda's not your thing though, you can also check out Atelier Ryza when that comes out on the PS4, Switch, and PC on the 26th. If you're waiting for the PC version that will be out a month later on October 29th, I think that's to sync up with the English release. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I do have a feeling that is the case. Alternative games are kind of like the Madden or the FIFA of the JRPG world. They're just consistently coming out with a new alternative game every single year. So if that's your thing, like if you're a big fan of the series, then that's really good news for you. You always have a game to look forward to. The one this year I think is a little, little bit different just because it has uh, a different art style than the last couple years, uh, and I think the series is going in a little bit more of an action direction. So if you're jumping into the series for the first time and you're really worried about kind of getting overwhelmed with a well-established series, this is probably a good point to actually just pick up um, and start from here. I'll admit, uh, I think the art style is what caught my eye. I've never really purchased an Altira game before, but this year I might break that trend and actually pick this up and try to give it a serious look. Coming out on the same day, you can also check out Code Vein for the PS4, the Xbox One, uh, and also the PC. Code Vein was supposed to come out last year in 2018, but was delayed for quality reasons. So we're gonna see how that turns out when it finally, finally releases, uh, and whether or not all that extra development time was worth it. And lastly on the 26th is Ease 9 Monstrum Nox for the PS4. It looks like the roster in this game is just a little bit larger than previous Ease games. If you played Ease 8 or the remake of 4 uh, or even Ease 7, it looks like it's the same kind of action RPG combat. If you really, really like that, there's more of that to enjoy in 9. I actually really personally enjoyed Ease 8, so I think I'll be picking this up uh, sooner rather than later. Rounding out the entire month on the 27th is Dragon Quest XI on the Switch. Dragon Quest XI, of course, came out a couple years ago uh, on the PS4 and in Japan on the 3DS, each with their own kind of unique art style. The Switch version combines both of those, so if you want to play in 3D, you can do that. 
be going to play in that nostalgic to the art style, you can also do that. So that's really, really exciting. For Japan, though, I think the Switch version is a little bit exciting because it has voice acting. Now, that's not quite a big deal, I think, for English players because the game already launched with voice acting.、Uh, but Dragon Quest is kind of a. It's kind of seen still as a classic series. So in Japan,、um, Dragon Quest games is usually just don't have voice acting. And 11 finally breaks that trend with the Switch re release.、Uh, it also gets a bunch of other quality of life. Improvements. So, if you've never played Dragon Quest XI on the PS4、uh, or the 3DS, then I think the Switch is a pretty good point to、uh, start playing. And that's gonna do it for now. Short and sweet for September. I think for me personally, there's a bunch of games that I actually really, really do wanna check out, which is、uh, awesome considering the last couple months hasn't really been that exciting for me. Uh, honorable mention goes to Monster Hunter World Iceborne, which is actually not a brand new game, but an expansion. But I think an expansion in this day and age is pretty rare, and it seems like they're adding a lot of new content. So if you are a fan of Monster Hunter and you want more content to play, probably already you're looking forward to Iceborne. But just in case you, for some reason, haven't heard of it, I would also give、uh, Iceborne a look in September. As always, if there's a game that I didn't mention but you feel like I really should have, go ahead and let me know what it was down in the comments.、Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter if you want. You'll find a link to my profile in the description. And if you guys have extra time and you want something else to watch, feel free to jump on over to the channel and find another video to enjoy. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again. Take care.